Fatume and welcome to today's three how to workshop on geothermal with Terry Nodder and our guest speaker, Darlene Pratt, the Executive Director at London Quay Art Center. Before we start our session, please keep your mic muted so that we can avoid any background noises as we begin. Also note, we are recording this presentation. So if you cannot be with us throughout the entire session, you can watch it again or share it with a friend when the recording is shared on Tree's YouTube channel, where we will send you the link when it's available. Stay tuned. Okay. This workshop series is made attainable thanks to the support from the Ontario Trillium Foundation. As you may or may not know by now, Thames Region Ecological Association, TREE, is hosting this workshop. TREE is a local nonprofit registered charity who has been active in the community since 1986 on important environmental issues. It's known for a number of activities, such as special events, workshops, programs to engage the community and encourage public policy. TREE's main objective is to educate members in the community to protect the environment, stay informed, and take personal action on climate change. Its vision, a sustainable community. Topics over time have included air quality, plastics, pesticides, anti-idling, green consumerism, and much more, with a core focus around waste reduction, active transportation, and action against climate change. Hi, my name is Darlene Pratt. I'm the Executive Director here at London Clay Arts Centre, but previous to becoming the Executive Director, I was a volunteer who was the campaign chair and the project manager to raise the money and build London Clay Arts Centre from 2008 to 2014-ish. And so this space that we're standing in now isn't that remarkable to look at, but what's remarkable about it is that it is the equipment for the geothermal heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system that we have here in London Clay Arts Centre. And so for those of you who aren't familiar with geothermal, what geothermal is, it, it allows you to heat and cool your facility through the latent heating and cooling capacity of the earth. So the parking lot at the north end of our building has eight wells, 380 and 420 feet deep, really, really deep. That would be the sort of linear equivalent of from here to Adelaide Street, very, very deep into the ground. And so the fluid circulates through those. So in the winter, you're taking the warmth out of the earth and in the summer, you're putting the warmth back into the earth. So these machines back here are the heat pumps and four of the wells that I mentioned in the back serve this first floor of the building and four of them serve the second floor of the building. So we can show you those spaces. So yeah, each floor is about 3,500 square feet of space. And again, on the inside, nothing remarkable. You wouldn't, you wouldn't figure out that it's a geothermal system. It looks very conventional. So we've got the spiral ductwork in the ceiling with the air being pushed through it. And similarly, so it goes all the way, obviously, from one end to the other. And then on the second floor, the system is slightly different. Upstairs, the, uh, the system is, I always get this mixed up. Down here, it's water to water, water to air. Upstairs, it is air to air, I think it is. There's two different, we had, because the second floor was developed a few years after the first floor, the equipment that handles the air, that moves the, the heat and cool, cooling is a little bit different. So actually the upstairs is a little easier to um, switch in the fall and, and um, summer from heating and cooling back and forth but they work in the same way. They still use the geothermal system in the north end. And of course, so there's actually 
actually uh, a unit up above this canopy that blows air to heat to cool this space as well. So this is our retail store, the Play Art Center, selling the work of uh, upwards of 40 different artists here. So the entire space is heated and cooled by the geothermal system. So here we are on the second floor at London Play Art Center, and this is where our classes and workshops are held. And I just want to say a couple things about why we decided to put geothermal in the Clay Art Center. We knew that the upfront cost would be quite significant in the neighborhood of about $100,000 more than putting in just a conventional system. But we knew that we were going to be here for years and years to come. It wasn't a short-term lease. We purchased this building. We own it. And so we're making that investment. Many of us are very interested in, in green alternatives. And so a couple of people on our team as well are physicists and people are very much into details and calculations. And so they did some work calculating the cost benefit and how many years it would take us to recuperate that upfront capital cost. And the calculation at that time was around 14 years. And so we decided that it was in our best interest. We were also were able to get a sizable donation from an anonymous donor to be able to put in the geothermal system. And so it has been 11 years since we've been in the Clay Art Center. Um, and we unfortunately don't have that calculation, but the system continues to work and the expectation is that the wells that are in the ground will endure forever, basically. So uh, from our perspective, it was a good investment and we're, we're quite pleased with it. On the second floor, they are stashed away in this cupboard. And again, they're a little bit different than the heat pump units that are down on the first floor. The second floor was developed in 2013. The first floor went into place in 2009. So in that four year period, we worked with a different company who installed these heat pump units. They're connected to the same wells, the same wells in the parking lot that we spoke about, but it works a little bit differently. The north parking lot at the Clay Art Center. So. This space we own, and actually the wells for the geothermal system are under here. There are eight wells at 380 and 420 feet deep, and they connect to the building over here. So this is sort of, you wouldn't know it, and again, it's unremarkable to look at, but this parking lot is remarkable because of the geothermal feature. Before we start, I would like to recognize the fact that uh, the lands that we're engaged in living in um, are a treaty situation with the First Nations people, and we're delighted that we are now one nation. And geothermal technology fits in good with us all because it's an earth-friendly system or technology. Um, geothermal actually is more of a, an energy transfer uh, technology or mechanism and um, the, um, the energy that is engaged with geothermal is earth energy. The beautiful thing about geothermal technology and, and we use geothermal technology as a phrase that it's really an energy transfer system. Um, it takes energy from where you have it to where you want it or where you don't want it. So for example, if you want to cool your house down in the summertime, you take the heat from your house and you dump it into the earth and the earth readily accepts it. And reverse that in the summer, in the wintertime, you're taking heat from the earth and putting it in your home through the use of a, a geothermal piece of equipment. But the thing to keep in mind is that the geothermal, um, the energy itself is free from the earth. It costs to get it transferred one way or the other. So what we wanted to talk about today really is more of a, um, a novel approach to geothermal installations or geothermal um, energy in your home and your life. Um, so we'll move into the next uh, few slides here. And uh, this is a typical geothermal piece of equipment. It's, uh, an, it's like a regular furnace. And we can certainly, uh, you know, look at this piece of equipment. It's a big box and uh, it's a, what we call an air, water to air system. Um, 
So geothermal and energy transfer, the earth is the battery bank for the heating and the cooling. Um, we are going to show you a de uh, um, a dem uh, excuse me, an installation that we performed 10 years ago. Now, I uh, went back to see these good folks a couple of months ago and everything there is working fine. It's so certainly gratifying. So here's the back garden where we put in our geothermal earth loop. We would call this the battery bank. So that the heating and the cooling components are there. Um, so we started out with um, background information on a chap by the name of Otto Schweck. Otto is passed on now, but he did amazing research with what we call uh, uh, heat exchangers or the earth loop. And he uh, did this research, presented it in many countries, including Japan at this particular uh, seminar. And we copied his technology, amplified it, and now you're going to see how it unfolded for this particular application. Um, normally you have different earth loop types. Uh, you can see there's uh, horizontal, vertical, and now the one that we're engaged in now is called a slinky, or a slinky loop, excuse me, slinky or um, um, coiled loop is what I prefer to call it. So it begins with, a, with a, an installation. We took a piece of equipment and we drilled a hole. Here you can see the hole being drilled. Wonderful. So you can see that we drilled uh, a hole that was uh, auguring out a hole that was four feet wide and we went down approximately 25 feet. And you can see the coiled 
loop that we now are going to insert into this hole. Um, quite simply, it's a matter of uh, preparing the coil the way we have here. And 10 years ago, this is what we did. Excuse me? You still use the same process? If I was doing a geothermal, I'd be doing the same thing. Maybe better, but more or less the same thing. So you can see the hole was uh, quite deep, um, putting the coil in uh, was exciting to get it in. We used, in this particular installation, we used four uh, coils and four holes, each one representing a one ton. The house was rated for a four ton geothermal unit. So in drilling these holes, um, we spaced them about 25 feet apart and uh, got all four holes drilled um, probably took the machine uh, from the time it arrived till the time it left approximately two hours, two and a half hours. So it was very, uh, very uh, pr practical and also quite, quite fast. And uh, once the uh, holes were drilled and the loops installed, what we had to do then is, of course, join up all the loops and make it one circuit. So you can see we've got uh, 300 feet of a three quarter inch pipe plastic and you can see different types of loops here, but uh, quite easy to move and uh, very uh, practical. Um, it, it particularly worked well in this application and uh, it, uh, we've done quite a few of them. So this is a home where we had uh, a bigger uh, heating load requirement was actually six ton unit. So we uh, drilled these uh, loops into that earth too. Um, using, uh, using the geothermal, uh, this concentrated vertical loop um, offers tremendous amount of opportunity for um, people to have a geothermal system in their home uh, and buildings uh, where the cost of installation is probably quite acceptable, surprisingly. This particular installation cost was probably under $2,500 and uh, made the whole process very practical um, and complete. Um, no intrusion. Once it was done, it was done. So uh, developers could actually embrace this uh, today because homes are far more efficient. This particular home is probably 50 years old now. Excellent. There you go. 
So you can see the hole in the unit that the, the, the young chap who took this video was the, home, the son of the homeowner was just very appreciative. But did a very, very nice job of drilling the hole and inserting the loop. So you can see the coil, one going in and one coming out. Those are the ones that we would now join together. So there's the trench to bring them all together. Um, the whole loop process from start to finish was one day. And uh, there was no urgency. There was a matter of just doing it and uh, worked out quite well. This is uh, an interesting thing here. At this point, we are fusing the loop together. We use a fusing process where we heat the loop uh, ends and bring them together so that they're fully fused. Excellent. So now uh, with the trenching all done and the loops and the holes drilled and the loops installed, we now have the earth loop connected and now drilling the holes into the home where we now have a series of um, a complete geothermal loop. The earth being, of course, the source of the heat and the cool uh, transfer. Um, the fluid that's used in is an ethanol antifreeze. So today's homes being very efficient, a series of loops like this are very easy to put into a small space and geothermal can be uh, a serious contender for people to heat and cool their homes. Um, I do want to make a point here on this is um, one of the one of the features of this loop system can be uh, embraced we would call it passive cooling. You don't need a geothermal system. So you can have passive cooling in your home using a loop system like this with a hydronic coil, such as you see here. So the idea behind it is you don't have to have active air conditioning to have a, cool, uh, a, a cooling process for your home. Uh, we, we, as I said, we refer to this as passive cooling. One of these coils would sit in your in your uh, furnace ducting system with a fan blow and blow the air across this coil would give you cooling during the summertime. It may not take the whole load, but it certainly would uh, do a 60 to 70 percent of the cooling in your home. This is the type of uh, augering bit. Uh, it's, uh, the neighbors were very surprised to see this come up the street, but then they're used to me uh, doing a lot of different things. So. It's a four foot auger. There are some that are bigger, but this one worked out really well. So what are your expectations when it comes to geothermal? Um, just a, a point of reference, really. Um, you can read the slide there. A the geothermal system is an energy transfer machine taking heat from the earth and using it. The cost of taking the heat is our investment. Um, you'd expect a reasonable return. So we will um, expect that the uh, operation of a geothermal system would last a long time, capital costs being covered, then the operational costs are what you deal with. Um, the cost of nothing, well, which is really the earth uh, as a source of uh, temperature exchange, uh, early adopters, we've seen thousands and thousands of people put in geothermal systems. They're the pack leaders, and today they're 
many, many people embracing the geothermal as a first option for heating and cooling and hot, hot water. Um, and of course, the investment there is, uh, you know, when you install this couple that install this particular system, um, it's been in there 10 years now, of course, and that's their um, operational cost. It's been well returned and in the investment side and uh, the asset value is still there. Um, beyond IQ and EQ lies the intelligence. So an intelligence that is transformative and creative. So we look forward to um, folks embracing clean energy and renewable energy so that we can all move forward. Um, so your next steps. So what is your current situation? It could be natural gas, but then you have all of these options. And the idea is to move forward with at least a step in the right direction. My choice was to get rid of natural gas and go for a geothermal system. So my home is totally electric and uh, we're enjoying the clean energy. And the options are now it's up to you to decide how you wanna move forward with um, geothermal in this option that we've shown you today the cost is very attractive um, what used to cost thousands and thousands of dollars for um, a, a deep uh, drilling option now can be uh, accepted um, a lot uh, less expensive um, so we we urge you to move forward and uh, here's your options It's, it's accepted as the premium choice and it's the highest standard of efficiency. And of course, the geothermal system is designed to last for more than 25 years. So it's a good investment. How does that compare to solar? Well, when you're talking about solar, you're talking about solar electric or solar thermal. We would highly recommend a solar thermal addition to a geothermal as it, it uh, the solar is, uh, an, again, another capital investment, but the return on the investment is very good. Um, solar thermal integrating with geothermal will generally make uh, the combined investment very attractive. And at the same time, the longevity of the dual system is probably in excess of 25 years. So it makes it a very, very good package. Solar, solar electric, of course, is a good investment to um, generate your own clean energy and use it for your own purposes. Great combinations. So the question is, with all the proven benefits of a geothermal system, is there one in your future? And the question is, why? Yes. And here's why. So you can see our current situation with Mother Earth. Yes, we don't want to linger there. We need to change and move forward to the next picture. So regeneration is the first law of creation, the most efficient way. And with geothermal, you're embracing regeneration. I congratulate you. Thank you. Hello. Um, yes, in regarding to uh, uh, installations on geothermal, um, fortunately, I began my geothermal career back in 1975 and opted out for a while and came back to it in 2000 or thereabouts and installed a bunch of geothermal. And uh, it's nice to go back to see some folks and this particular one that we've seen is over 10 years old and the folks are quite happy with it performing heating and cooling i guess you take it for granted um one of the things i am pursuing is a group uh first nations people uh communities they're embracing or shifting away from diesel uh, energy to renewables and one of the things the efficiency of the geothermal is uh, is very attractive and uh, one of the groups that i'm pursuing with is called Aki Energy, um, Manitoba, Saskatchewan area. They've installed over a million dollars worth of geothermal 
recently, uh, over two or three, four years, and they're so satisfied with it that they are moving now, they predict that over the next 10 years, they will increase that, uh, that installation to over a hundred million dollars, um, which is a great uh, um, step forward in uh, making their communities um, very environmentally friendly, excellent stewardship, good leadership, and uh, as a permanent um, fix or a permanent solution for their energy requirements, heating, cooling, and hot water. It's a real uh, positive sign. We believe that many of the remote communities will use geothermal um, energy as a uh, way of heating and cooling their buildings, their homes. Uh, obviously, it fits in very well with the, their, uh, their mandate or their guidance in, in acknowledging the planet, uh, the earth, Mother Earth, and the stewardship that they have in the sacred of the water and the earth. So we embrace that and we're pursuing that opportunity to help them um, move forward and uh, complete the circle. And uh, we will advise on how the success of that uh, happens. Uh, remote communities in other parts of Canada uh, with the diesel mitigation program, we see the efficiency of geothermal coming on board. Um, we look forward to seeing that and uh, hold, hope it's an example to the rest of our Canadian uh, folks to embrace geothermal. Thank you. Point of view of installations on geothermal up till now, it has been embraced, but the embracing of it has usually been in the rural areas. No natural gas is available, so people have opted to go with geothermal. Um, funding operation or incentive funding was offered over, let's say, 2000 to 2010, uh, 15, to uh, embrace geothermal, particularly in the rural areas where people saw the incentive as a very good way of going forward. In the city itself, um, there aren't too many installations on geothermal systems. The cost is being prohibitive, but of course, natural gas prices are very uh, attractive, and uh, people have embraced that. Uh, I, it would be ch it would be challenging for a developer. Developers um, obviously are concerned about the cost of the homes they're building, and geothermal is an expensive option. We're hoping that our way of doing geothermal systems with the concentrated loops will will cause more people to say uh, maybe it's something that we could look at. Um, certainly, um, once you uh, look at geothermal from the capital expenditure and offset the gas, you, uh, you'll find that it really is not a far out of, in fact, you'll find it rather attractive over the long haul. Um, we would encourage uh, developers to consider it and uh, homeowners would certainly look at it as a clean option for the future. After all, the earth now is, is uh, the young people need to embrace the cleanest technologies, the most efficient ones for the long term. Thank you. The geothermal that we deal with is, is low heat, temp meaning the earth temperature here is around 52 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 10 degrees Celsius. The heat that's available in Iceland and other geothermal hotspots, even in BC, there, there's a lot of work being done in, in uh, tapping into the earth's geothermal high temperature sources of heat. And even using that particular heat, they can generate a lot of electricity from the heat that's uh, available. So they'll transfer it from heat or steam over into a geothermal, uh, excuse me, geothermal into electricity for clean energy in the electrical. The thing is, while they're doing it on one side with high temperature geothermal hot water, to electricity. Now what we do is use that electricity to use it in geothermal low temperature in their homes for energy transfer. So we'd like to see the bookends come together. So there's no point in making clean energy with geothermal high temperature and then using it to burn natural gas and fossil fuels to heat the homes. It's kind of a contradiction. So we would like to see that step, that bridge.
and hopefully that will happen soon. With our techniques, it's, it's highly possible that a person would look at this and say, absolutely, if I can afford the geothermal, I would gladly do it. So perhaps our message is, it is affordable, so let's do it. Cool. So when you're asking why do people want to do solar as opposed to geothermal, the solar energy is, is harvested for using it as electrical energy for the whole house. Whereas a geothermal system is a heating cooling process. So it uses electricity. So the two of them are not, um, they're not, they're complementary, but they're not adversary. You can have both. And a person will put up a solar array, like I've put up a solar array. A solar array in my house is about six and a half kilowatts. And it's, um, it cost me around, I believe, maybe $17,000. Whereas my geothermal system, when I installed it, was probably close to $20,000. Today, a geothermal system, like the one we did, where it's a four ton for that one, for that particular house, uh, was approximately $20,000. Um, that's a very um, attractive price on a geothermal system. Geothermal systems tend to be more than that. Um, generally speaking, because of the you know, the effort involved. But the piece of equipment itself um, can be expensive. Um, a, a, a four ton unit is probably going to be close to $15,000 just for the package of equipment. And then you have to do the installation outside, which is the earth loop, and the installation inside. So you're running up to $25,000 by the time you've got a geothermal. So most folks will look at natural gas and say, oh, $3,000 for natural gas and another $3,000 for air conditioning, I'm covered. Done. So that, there's, your, there's your logistics. And it's too bad it's that way. Rural customers obviously didn't have natural gas, so the only choice they had was the efficiency of a geothermal system. And it worked out really well. So, so it's interesting, yes, it's where natural gas is, it's tough to see a geothermal acceptance. But today, we cannot continue to burn fossil fuels. Today, interest rates are at historically low points. So to put in a 20 to 20 to $25,000 geothermal system um, is part of the mortgage component today. Um, to install a, to remove a natural gas furnace or a natural gas situation from a home and, and replace it with a geothermal system is challenging. Most people wouldn't entertain it for the cost of the equipment and for the operational cost switching from now from natural gas at a low cost to electricity. And announcement this week was the fact that our electrical rates are going back to time of use billing now. So you're going to see a significant increase in electrical usage. The bottom line for a person is choice. Choice is I'm going to put in a geothermal because it's the right thing to do for the environment. To stay with fossil fuel, natural gas is attractive because of the price, but ultimately what is the price we're paying for that and what's the comments and, the, and so on. So it, it, it's a, it becomes a very personal choice and I know for my own sake, um, while the choice was expensive, today I live with the fact that I can, not, you know, I feel good about what I did and that's important to me. Thank you everyone for participating in three how to workshop on geothermal with Terry Nover. Thank you both Terry and Darlene Pratt for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you folks again in our next session. So stay tuned.